understand. We ask that you allow your children to apply it to their lives so we can be pleasing to you as we walk worthy of our calling. Our calling to follow you, Father, our calling to do your will, our calling to be a blessing to those that we come across. We ask, Father, that you bless us from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet with the energy, with the heart, to want to do your will. Today we ask that you, with the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable on thy side. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And let all of God's children say amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. 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 So we return to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 1 through 6. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. Now we read from the New King James Version. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the call which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and bond of peace. There is only one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats Amen. in the presence of the Lord and allow me to give you a glimpse. Speak a word to you about walking worthy of our call. Walking worthy of our call. <clears throat> You do know we have all been called to do something. Amen. Amen. Whether you have figured it out by now or not. <laughs> Some figured it out early. Some figured it out much later in life. Life has a way of distracting us, you know. Amen. It does. It has a way of distracting us. Our young folks, it seems like there are more distractions on the, the younger side of things. And then as we kind of weed through life and Fast living and all the fun, because yeah, my young years were fun. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But they were distracting as well. But we have to understand that through it all, once we mature spiritually, once we mature, there's a calling waiting for us at the end of all of this fun and fast living. Amen? Amen. We have a calling. God has blessed us with gifts as well. Can we agree there? Amen. Amen. Some of us have been blessed with the ability to pick the right note at the right time. Amen. Some of us have been blessed with speed, with athletic ability. Some of us have been blessed with Mensa level intelligence. Yeah. We've all been blessed with something. God has given us all something that can be used in our calling. But here's where our calling fails. Here's where it gets derailed, where it gets sidetracked. Let me use this as, as a way of illustration. In order for the body, the body, physical body, to move forward, walking, the left foot has to cooperate with the right foot in order for us to move forward. So far, so good, everybody? Amen. 
But it's not just the foot's job to move us forward because each foot is connected to a leg. So now you've got not only right foot, left foot, you've got right leg, left leg that have to cooperate, that have to be on the same page. How about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And moving forward. But what happens when the right foot wants to run and the left foot says, I want to walk? <laughs> Right? <laughs> but all of them move in accordance to where the head says go. Follow me. I believe that universally, a whole, we can get so much farther if all the members of the body would just cooperate with the head. Amen. Amen. The head knows where it wants to go. He he has the eyes, because I have never seen a foot with an eyeball. <laughs> the head sees it, he knows where he wants to go. He's, he's thought about the direction he wants to go in. Just think about this morning at Sunday school, we were talking about the life of David. And the scripture talks about. David being born, his birth being planned even before he was born. Amen. So if there's enough thought and process that goes into your birth, how much thought and process goes into your walk? Amen. 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 So we have to understand that, that, that the head of things, God, he has ordered our steps. Now, I understand that where he's taking you, where he is pointing you to go in, it may not look comfortable. It may look a little unsafe. It may not even look fun for our young folks. Because why else would we want to do it if we can't have fun? <laughs> but understand this. Those things in life that I wanted the greatest were probably not the best things for me. But what God wants for me is always the best thing. Amen. 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 He's always been a provider for me even when I act like he wasn't there. He's always ordered my steps. Now you let me get some bumps and some bruises along the way and that's life. But he let me understand some things in those bumps and bruises. He showed me what side of the bread my butter was on. He showed me where my blessings came from. Mm -hmm. And I didn't learn until later on in life, after a bunch of good living and some fun and some hanging out. I didn't learn until after all of that when I was able to slow down and listen to him. Exactly what my calling in life was. Yeah. Have you ever, those of you who are driving, that's everybody. <laughs> Have you ever did more, <laughs> did more than the speed limit? <laughs> I remember driving this car one time. And um, a friend of mine said, hey, Pulled up in my yard, he said, hey, just got this new toy. I'm like, okay. It was a BMW, it was a five series BMW. Manual. I love a five speed. That's how you keep um, car theft down, is make them all manual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> These kids nowadays don't know how to drive a manual, right? <laughs> so we got in the car and we, we took it out on the road and I, and I stepped on the gas and, and oh man, I was in third gear, 95 miles an hour. Third gear. I threw it in the fourth, I got up to 110. Ooh. And I said, I gotta stop this. This is getting good, to, this is getting too good for me. He said, oh no, my friend, you got two more to go. Man. And as I looked, I couldn't 
identify or even tell what I was passing. Yeah. So I had to slow it down. I had to slow it down. God has a way of slowing us down in life. So one, we can stick around and see what's ahead of us, what we're coming up against. But two, so we can enjoy the scenery. Amen. There's some beautiful things out there that God wants us to see. I ride bikes now on the path and I get to see all the birds. I get to see all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm digressing right now, but I'm just in a moment where I, I've seen some things now that I've slowed down. But understand this, when you're able to slow down and see, God will show you some things in your walk. Amen. Amen. Some blessings that were so much better than all of that speed that I was just dealing with. So what happens? What happens now, Pastor? What happens in this whole thing called life? What happens in this calling? Because, you know, our calling, sometimes we, the foot doesn't want to cooperate with the, with the arm and and, and, and the leg doesn't want to want to want to cooperate with the elbow. Get out of your own way, because sometimes it's the members of the body that get in the way of the body moving forward. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. The members, the parts, the pieces of the body. So, so what we're talking about is us coming together. That's the prayer. Thirty-one days of prayer. That is the prayer that we come together as a body so we can move forward easier. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So in the pursuit of godliness, we must always prioritize our purpose. What is your purpose today? What is your purpose in the body of Christ? The Apostle Paul urges the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus, to walk in a manner that's worthy of their calling. It's worthy of their calling. This is not just any walk. This is not just you out on a stroll, but a purposeful progression towards the likeness of Christ. Understand this. The end result is you to be as like Christ-like as possible. Not as deacon-like, not as pastor-like, not as first lady-like, but as Christ-like as possible. Amen. 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 Every step, every action, and every word should reflect the divine calling that we have received. So far, so good, everybody. Amen. Our Christian journey is a persistent pursuit. It's an everyday activity. It's not something that we can only plan and say, I'm only going to do this on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I did enough on Sunday, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down off my pedestal. I'm going to put that on the shelf on, on Monday. Like like hairdressers, you you'd be hard pressed to find a hairdresser open on a Monday. <laughs> so all of a sudden on Monday we put things aside. I'm just gonna pick it back up and, and I'm gonna do my best on Tuesday. How about that? This is a persistent everyday pursuit. It requires this thing called endurance. We are called to the lives that continually seek. To embody the character of Christ, who exemplified humility, how about that? Gentleness and patience. Gotta have patience. That's the one I struggle with. Gotta have patience. Gotta have patience. Our walk should be consistent with the high calling that has been extended to us through grace. But the path that we walk, the path that we walk is a direction, it's a pointed path. It, there, there's a goal in mind. It's, we're not just moving ahead to land somewhere out there. We are going towards a goal. And that goal is directed by the Holy Spirit. It's not a walk of aimless wandering, but it's a walk of deliberate movement towards unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. If you are connected to somebody and you have no peace in that connection, Maybe your connection is a bad connection. Yeah. Yeah. 
If it costs you your peace, it costs too much. If you walk away from your interactions with that, with that person, feeling beat up, feeling discouraged, feeling tired, maybe you need to pray about that connection. Amen? Amen. Paul's exhortation in Ephesians is, 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 a clear, is a clear call to walk in the direction, in this pointed path, reflecting on the unity and love that Christ prayed for in his final hours on earth. But we have to understand that there is, in the body of Christ, that there is a unity that, well, no, let me, let me back up, strike that from the record. There should be a unity in spirit. Amen. 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 The essence of the Christian walk is unity, togetherness in the spirit, unity in purpose, and unity in faith. Paul emphasizes that the church, as the body of Christ, must be a reflection of this thing called oneness. This oneness that exists within the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they, there's a oneness with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, how they move together, how they operate together. They don't operate um, away from each other. Individual in their own personalities, but they still have the same goal. Amen? Amen. In Ephesians 4 and 1, Paul begins with this plea. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, I beg you, I ask you, to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. Mm -hmm. This calling is not merely an invitation to salvation, but a call to life of holiness and unity in the spirit, to be one with God. Paul, writing from prison, urges the Ephesian believers to live in such a way that their lives reflect the character and mission of Christ. He emphasizes the importance of humility, gentleness, patience, and above all, love as the foundation of all things. The unity Paul describes is not just a superficial agreement, but it's a deep and spiritual, again, a oneness ground in our shared faith and work in the Holy Spirit. But we're called to humility. We are called to humility. What did we talk about this morning in, in um, Sunday school? We talked about Saul and how he got big headed. Big headed. Yeah. Arrogant. Yeah. How he got puffed up. We are called to be just the opposite. We are called to be humble. Humble servants. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 2, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in what? In love. Got to throw that in there somewhere. And anywhere is a good place to throw it in. We've got to do things with a spirit of love. Amen? Amen. If you don't have love at the top of the hill, then, then what rolls down is nonsense. Everything flows out of love. Amen? Amen. Everything we have flows out of of love, humility is the foundation to unity. Can we agree there? Humility is the foundation to unity. Pride divides, but humility unites. Jesus is the ultimate example of humility. He washed the disciples' feet, demonstrating true greatness in the kingdom of God is found in serving others. Amen. Serving others. We are called to emulate his humility in our interactions with one another, considering others more significant than ourselves, as it says in Philippians 2 and 3. Humility leads us to a place of servanthood. We were saved to serve. serve. Amen. We were all saved to serve. And in that place of servanthood, we can truly bear one another's burdens and love and fostering this spirit of unity. The only way, the only way we are going to reach the world is to reach it through love. We've got to let the world know that, yes, we love you. We care about you. 
How can we help you in your plight? How can we help you in your walk? Let us partner together. Let us grow with you as you grow with us, as we grow together in the name of our risen Savior. How about that? But we are also called to gentleness. Matthew 5 and 5 says this, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Gentleness or meekness is not weakness, but it's power under control. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's power under control. It's the disposition of Christ who is gentle and lowly in heart. Now, gentleness allows us to approach others with kindness, even in correction. Even in correction, maintaining peace and unity within the body of Christ. Now, by embracing this thing called gentleness, we create an environment where grace abounds, where grace is the overflow and unity is preserved. You can be a leader. You can be the one that's called and have to administer correction but there's nothing but love wrapped around that correction. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be rude to be right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And just because you're right does not give you the license to be rude. Yeah. We have to do things in the spirit of love. Whatever we're doing, I, I'm correcting you not because I hate you, but because I love you. Listen, if you're doing what you're doing and the Lord does not correct you, you may want to consider who you are. Amen. You may want to consider that. I can't correct somebody else's kid. I correct mine because they know I love them. Y'all better stop. <laughs> <laughs> I correct my kids because I love them. I'm not saying I don't love the neighborhood kids or anything. If I see Kevin, if I see you stepping out of line, I'm going to say something to you. Now, whether you hear it or not, that's totally on you. But I'm going to correct mine. Our Lord and Savior corrects us because he loves us, because he wants to see us do better. Amen? Amen. And if we know better, then we do better. We can't hold somebody accountable to a standard if you haven't taught them. Amen? Amen? So when they come through the doors, when they come through the doors as they are, that is not the time to admonish, that is not the time to judge, that is not the time to send somebody packing and tell them to put on something different. That is the time to wrap your loving arms around them and welcome them in this place. Amen. Amen. This is a hospital. This is a place where they get healing. This is a place where they get cleaned up. The world has already shown them what, what it's going to do with them. They came in the doors the way, that way. It's our job to to show love, show the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> but finally, there's a call to patience. I said this before, I can that. That's, that's, that's a tough one right there. That is. There are things that are tough for everybody. Amen? And I'm just being a little transparent. Maybe it's too much so right now. <clears throat> but there's a call to be patient. Ephesians 4 and 2 says this, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Grace, patience is essential in maintaining unity. Yeah. Everybody isn't in the same place at the same time all the time. Amen? Amen. We are all going to get there eventually, maybe at different times. How about this? Leave no one behind. Remember that whole slogan with the schools? No child left behind. Mm -hmm. How about no soul left behind? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. How about no soul left behind? Because I think the 
The gospel is for everybody. Whether you are super intelligent or not. I'll just say that. Whether you are the CEO or the janitor, the gospel is for everybody. What happened during the dark times, the times between the Old Testament and the New Testament? This thing called Koine Greek was, was K-O-I-N-E, Greek was created. A language that everybody understood because before then, the language so, was so far above the farmer's head, that language was so far above the shepherd's head, the language was so far above the average person's head that they couldn't understand it. So the language was created. Why? So everybody could hear the word of God. Everybody. Jews and Gentiles alike. That was everybody. Just as God is patient with us, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should reach repentance, we too must exercise patience with one another, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. If God threw you away when he got tired of you a long time ago when you first messed up, where would we be? Mm. Exactly. I don't even think I'd be here. There would be nobody preaching and preached to in the pews. Yeah. God gives us, he, he, he's that example of giving patience. Patience, no. Let, let me flip that and change the grace. How about that? Amazing. Yeah. He gives that grace. He gives us grace, the grace that we need to, to get it right. To do better. How about that? Yeah. Patience fosters an environment of grace where unity can flourish despite our imperfections and differences. Yes. So as we move forward in ministry, everybody has their own idea of what this ministry is supposed to look like. Everybody has their own idea of the direction we're supposed to go in. Everybody has their own idea of the place they want to see this thing end up in. Amen. But we've got to embrace. We've got to embrace each other for our differences as well as those things, our commonalities that bring us together. Amen. Amen. Unity in the spirit is the hope of the church. Paul concludes with a powerful declaration. Here it is. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. Here it is. Here's, here's the money verse. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. 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 If we can get on the same page and keep the main thing the main thing, and that is God himself, what do you want us to do here, Lord? Where do you want us to go, Lord? How do you want us to do it? And in all of that, if we're obedient, bring us the people to minister to. That's all we're asking. Our unity is grounded in our faith. Our faith in, in Jesus Christ. The one who calls us to this shared hope. This shared faith. This shared baptism. And as we walk worthy of our calling, we must always strive to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This unity is not optional, everybody. This unity is not optional. It's the very nature of the church. It's the very nature of the body of Christ. And, it, and we are called to reflect the togetherness of God to a divided world. We are the example. We are the example. Our unity is sacred. Gotta protect it. My dad used to tell us when we were younger. Um, don't talk about what goes on in this house. <laughs> yeah. Don't put our business out there in the street. 
<laughs> and I get it. When I come home, I do my best to leave work at work. I leave the world outside. I close my door and I get to my chair. That's my protection. That is my peace. Amen. Amen. Not saying that when I close the door that nothing gets done. But that's where the Lord speaks to me. And that's where I'm closer. So I'm quiet. I've slowed down. And I've locked all the distractions out. The Lord is telling us to do one thing and one thing only. As we minister, as we understand and realize our call, is that we stay together. Let nothing come between us as a church family. That arm can't go anywhere if it's cut off and sitting in a corner. Don't let things divide us. Amen? Amen. And in that unity that we have, we are such a stronger front in facing those things that are out, that are designed to bring us down. That is why we pray. That's why we come together to fellowship. Amen. Amen. So today, I'm asking you all, as we close this close this lesson up do you know what your calling is have you embraced your call what is stopping you mm -hmm. from your calling mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that you are some heathen because <laughs> you may be running from it. And, and you know something? I, I get it. I've run a long time. But you can't outrun God. You can't. You can't outrun God. I want to pray with each and every one of you today. Number one, that you find and embrace your calling. Number two, that we draw closer together so we can do greater things for him. Amen? Amen. What I ask today in my prayer, I pray that God gives us peace to, and the energy to do it. Amen. Amen. Together. Because I love y'all. And I'd rather do things with you than against you. Amen? Amen. 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 We should never be against each other when it comes to doing God's will. So today, if you have found yourself outside of this covenant relationship, this partnership, this unity that we have in the church, I want to pray with you. I want to pray that you find your way, that you find a place that, that's peaceful. Find a place that, that leads you to, to Christ and your calling for your life. Because once you find that calling, I trust me, I, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. Stop running and let the Lord wrap his loving arms around you so you can start doing his will and not thy will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you today. We thank you. We thank you for this gathering of your children. Father, we thank you that you have given each and every one of us a calling. You have given us gifts. You have given us a calling, Father. You have given us a direction. Now, we ask that you open our minds and our hearts, Father. You give us the the hearts to want to do. The calling is still there. But place in our hearts, Father, the willingness and the, the humility to want to do, Father, to want to be pleasing to you, to simply want to do your will. We love you today, Father. We bless you for all of those that have gathered here today. We, and we ask that you, that you present your, your people. You present your people with the love and the patience that it takes to honor you, to glorify you, and to fulfill your will here 
We love you. We bless you for all that you have done. Today we ask these prayers to be answered in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise Amen. in this place. Again, if you have found yourself outside of that covenant relationship um, and you are seeking a church, you are seeking a church, Grace Community Church is a great place to be. Um, we start, uh, our morning service starts at 11.30. Sunday school, 10 a.m. every Sunday. Amen? Amen. Um, join me this Wednesday. This Wednesday, we are back at it with um, our midweek Bible study fellowship. Uh, we kick things off at 6.30 with prayer. Wherever you may be, whether you're in the, at the gas station, at the grocery store, or you're just on your way home, or just relaxing in your chair at home, pray with us at 6.30 to 7 o'clock every Wednesday, every Wednesday. And then we kick off our midweek Bible study at 7 o'clock. Um, again, next Saturday, the 17th, back to school picnic right here at 1908 West 20th Street in the city of Lorain, Ohio. Bring all the kids. And I was asked yesterday, what if my kids aren't in school? Bring them anyway. <laughs> Bring them anyway. We, 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 we are opening the doors. We are welcoming the neighborhood. 1908 West 20th Street in the city of Lorain, Ohio. I am giving you a personal invitation. I want to see each and every one of you there. If you are out there listening and are able to be here, you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. 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 And the following day, we will have guest preacher for my third uh, pastoral anniversary, um, uh, Pastor Eddie Coates and his lovely wife, Dr. Tamara Coates. They will be visiting us next week and blessing us for next week's anniversary service on the 18th. Again, that service starts at 1130. Amen, everybody? Amen. Amen. Sister Brown will be in the back. She will be registering people for the elections. We're registering people to vote, um, checking to see your voters, uh, your eligibility. If you're, if you're registered or not, she will be hanging out with us just for a little while afterwards. Sister Brown. Can I just add to that announcement about Sister Brown? Sure. Is that what a lot of people don't realize is that the state of Ohio this past year purged 7,000 people from the voter rolls. Wow. Purge means they went in, they took them off, they hadn't voted for four years, they had a different kind of address. Sure. So a lot of people think they're registered, but they're, they may not be registered. And what I would, um, just to add to that even, if you have moved, changed your name, or done anything over the last, I would say, six to eight years, you want to check. You make sure you want to check with Sister Brown, or if you're out there listening, check to make sure you are still registered or to re-register because they have done some purging. I heard that as well. They have done some purging of uh, the roll, and you may be one of those unfortunate individuals that they purge from our roles. Yes, Sister Brown. And to check. The audience there, they can go to voteohio.gov. Voteohio.gov, that's where you can check on your own if you are registered to vote. Voteohio.org.gov.gov. Yeah. Gov. Yeah. Gov. If you are to check um, your voter eligibility. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand and be dismissed. Let's all stand and be dismissed. Sweet, sweet spirit, everybody. There's a sweet, sweet, sweet spirit in this place.
Now unto him who is able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. Let all of God's children say amen. 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 And hey, everybody, amen. have a great week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Amen. Good day, man. Good day, sir. Thank you. Good. Bless you.